Hello, hello, hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Just blacked out there for a minute. Yeah, it seems to happen a lot these days with technology uh-huh. and, you know, all that jazz. Uh, so anyways, tell me a little bit about uh, what you've been up to recently. Um, it looks like the Lost 80s tour is just taking off. Yeah, we've just done the first two shows of the Lost 80s tour. Both shows have been really good. A lot of fun to play, good acts, a good show all around. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what bands do. We go out on the road and we, we enjoy playing our guitars and our synths and having a good time. It's, uh, it's what we were born to do. And to have you guys um, in town on September 1st, you're going to be playing at the Mountain Winery. Yeah, that's a great place to play. You guys been there previously? I've played there about three times before. Um, so yeah, I know I know about it. Uh, I've actually seen it grow from it's about twice as big now as it was when I first played there. So it's a really you know, and it's in a great, great, um, it's a great like little venue. It's just hard to get to, I suppose. You know, people should make plans ahead of time. It is Labor Day weekend. Uh huh. Um, That'd be crazy. Is, yeah. <laughs> but that's the best time to go out and enjoy yourself and, and see some great bands. It is a great time, but usually on days like that, I like to just lie on the sofa and watch television. Too many people out and about. Right, right. Uh, what are you watching these days? Uh, you know what? My favorite thing to watch is a. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation. I just put that on loop all the time, so it's just on Netflix, just going and going and going. And for some reason, I always find one that I've never seen before. There's there's so much programming now. It's like it's pretty much endless. Yeah, and a lot of it is, uh, I don't know, it seems to be like remakes or it's repetitive or... You know, the story you've seen before, it's just made slightly differently. So there's a lot of sifting through stuff, stuff you like, I think. A little bit more about the new album, Ascension. Uh-huh. I'm missing your question. I don't know. Oh, that's okay. Um, can you give us a little bit of background on how that album came into play? Yeah, I was at home. Um, basically writing my new album, my solo album, and I got a phone call, and it was from uh, a record company called August Day, and they they basically said to me, they had this idea to put orchestra, you know, to to the hit. So I was kind of like, yeah, it sounds kind of interesting. Let's, you know, let's talk a bit more. So after talking for a while, they said, do you mind if we use the original people that did, you know, the original band, basically? So I just thought about it. I said, well, you know what? They were involved when those songs were hits and everything. So, yeah, let's take take a step back and make a different kind of greatest hits with the orchestra. Um, So basically, we got together in different studios. We, We didn't have to get together and actually play. We did it all in different studios, and because of today's technology, you know, that's kind of easy to do. So then they took what we'd done, and they they went and put an orchestra across it and sent it to us to listen to, and we went, yeah, great, put it out, it's great. So, you know, it it wasn't a hard album to make at all. It was stuff we'd all know. We knew how to play the songs. I think it only took us about two weeks to... uh, complete the band part of it and then another two weeks for the orchestra to to get involved in it and finish their part. The Flock of Seagulls was so successful here in the United States. What, how how um you know how did people catch on to to you guys at such an early stage? Um when we first came over we played colleges um, we came over with our friends who were a band called Squeeze and we played some colleges with them and then we ended up just booking some small clubs 
and we stayed in America. Uh, we were having like dance club hits and stuff like that in the early 80s. So we stayed, uh, and we did about two or 300 gigs, and then we ended up on tour with the police doing stadiums, you know, of 100,000 people a night. And it, we were just, hey, it's, you know, what else are we going to do with our lives? Go back and sit at home. So we just wanted to stay out and play. And I think the fact that we were very enthusiastic and the songs were right for the time, I think all the college kids and radio was looking for something different. MTV was out. I think all that helped to make us, you know, the band we are. Plus, of course, we were very fashionable, and I had an incredibly good hairdo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. And, and people are still talking about it to this day. Like, I know, kind yeah. Of a, a revival, right, of the 80s and, and 90s. And do you feel like that's working for you guys? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the Lost 80s tour, you know, is... is uh, pure nostalgia basically all the bands are playing their hits and um it, it, the, the first two nights have been absolutely packed out so there's, there's a lot of interest and i think a lot of that comes because bands don't really write songs anymore they just get on a computer and you know they run down a drum beat and throw some vocals and stuff on it so there's not that many songs out it's their, their beats and their rhythms and there's hip hop and stuff like that, but it's not nothing like the eighties. So it's definitely like the sixties was an era. The eighties is definitely an era of music. Music, are you mostly write, writing on a computer now or do you feel like the process is still the same as when you started? Well, you know, for me the computer is just a tool. It's the way you record these days. Uh, some people like to go back and try and do it on tape, but it's, it's much easier on a computer as long as you're in control of the computer, not the computer controlling what you can do. Then I think it's, uh, it's, you know, it's possible to come up with good stuff. Uh, in a way, technology is the problem, and in an, another way, technology solves the problem. You know, so... You can write stuff, record it at home, and it's good. Or you can write stuff and record it at home, and it's rubbish. So it's uh, there's no filter anymore. There's no record company people to go, I like this band, let's sign them up and do it. You just do it yourself and put it out. And somehow some bands get hits and other bands don't. It's a completely different way of doing things to what I grew up with and how the band was when we first started people find out more about you guys online i, I had a, a hard time finding the official page <laughs> um yeah you know it, it, i didn't grow up with the internet so to me although it's it's useful and it's fun it's not where i focus you know it's uh it's like people these days so that they tend to now go oh, if you want publicity you've got to get on facebook and you've got to do internet stuff which to me, that kind of stuff is alien, you know. Um, it's out there because of, we have a 30-year history of being a band. But it's not like I can be bothered to run it, you know. So so people put their own pages up. Fans run their own pages. And um, good on them. It takes, the, takes the workload off me. I don't have to think about it too much. It's like free publicity. <laughs> It is, you know, and, and if fans want to talk about the band by starting a page, then, yeah, we, we can join in and say what we want, um, but we don't have to run it. And that's the great thing for me is I don't want to be sitting up every day for two hours going, oh, I must, I must do this on the, the web and I must do that, you know, because um, fans are doing it all. And it, it actually makes it interesting for me. They come up with photos they took 20 years ago and I, that I've never seen. It's a great it's a great place for browsing and grazing and stuff like that, but uh, it's not my favorite place to be. You know, I'd rather be sitting in front of my keyboard playing than sitting on the internet playing. Spirit. <laughs> mm. And 
Where do you see the band going in the next few years? Um, well, obviously, there's going to be more nostalgia. Um, but I think the band itself and those songs, they're from an era. And, you know, people want me to recreate that era, and I just don't think you can do it. So the band is different now, and we may make a, a Seagulls album that's today's Seagulls. Um, I'll be making another solo album. There's, uh, there's all kinds of possibilities, but, you know, the main thing is really just to have fun quizzing around playing. That's why you join the band in the first place. The fact that it was so successful was just icing on the cake. Memory of playing in San Francisco. Pardon? Memory of playing in the Bay Area. Well, you know, we all look playing. Uh, we'll, we'll play there. We'll have a great time there. People should come out to the show and dress up like the 80s and uh, pretend it's the 80s all over again because for three or four hours of their night, it will be. And um, it's a time, you know, the 80s, you could go crazy and no one said anything. So let's have that when we play there. Let's have people come out and forget that it's 2000. And 18, and go back to 1982 or 84 or whatever was their favorite um, year of the 80s. And they've all got to dress like seagulls and do seagull haircuts. Okay, I'll do my best. I have long hair, <laughs> so maybe I'll do it like you were. <laughs> uh, yes, go, go make yourself a little cardboard wig, you know, <laughs> and put it on. It's so easy to find these days. <laughs> Just make it. <laughs> Just go, go buy a cheap wig and chop it up and stick glue on it and stuff like that. It is. It'll be great. So what uh, doing the John Peel session? Yeah, that was very, very early on in our, um, in our, you know, creating stuff. Um, John Peel did a lot of really great underground uh, music. You know, he... He'd find bands that were on the very verge, and he'd give them a chance to be on radio. Um, the one thing I do remember about the John Peel sessions is we got there, and we had no instruments, and we had to just pick up what was around and and play them. So it was quite quite stressful in that way. Hello? Are you there? Me? Yeah, hello. Awesome. Are you driving under a bridge again? Yeah, we're going through a bunch of them right now. Okay. We're just, we're just leaving Chicago, and uh, it seems like there's a bridge every 100 yards or something like that. So. Oh, my God. I know how that is. The East Coast is like that, too, right? Like Maryland? Um, yeah. Yeah, once you get into the built-up areas, it's, it's just kind of... But then again, San Francisco is like that too, right? This is true. Lots of trolls, <laughs> lots of yeah. trolls. <laughs> trolls and trolls. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like a, a fantasy type fairy tale over here. <laughs> yeah, we just went under a bridge then and it disappeared. So, um. All right, so what else do you want to ask me? Oh, um, we were talking about John Peel and how you guys didn't have any instruments. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> It was daunting. It was scary because it was John Peel and he was famous. But yes. we just we just got up and did our thing. And uh, hang on one sec. Mm-hmm. And it worked out really good for us, you know. And I and I I know that they released it on a record a few years ago. Okay. Um, so it must have been pretty good, you know. And yep. the the funny thing was that although we had no instruments. We knew the guy that was producing the session, so it, that that helps us to like calm down and mm-hmm. you know just work things out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we first started as a band, John Peel was so far away from what we thought we could do, you know. And huh. then it was when we did it, it was like, wow, we must <laughs> be really getting somewhere now, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And. Um... Yeah, so you guys are going to be playing at the Mountain Winery on September 1st. Yeah. And it sounds like we can expect some of the hits, if not most of them. 
Yeah, it's you know, it's the whole night is based on bands and their hits. So yeah. um, we'll we'll be playing. Um, you know, it's energetic. It's it's full of life. It's uh, even I enjoy it. So I mean, you know, and I've been playing these songs for thirty odd years. So you know, my reaction is if people out there are enjoying it, then I'm mm-hmm. going to enjoy it. So you know, absolutely. And what inspired you to become a musician? How did that come about? Um, I don't really think I'm a musician because I don't, you know, I'm not like a really good player. I'm just good at playing my own stuff. Um, <laughs> well, you know, a real musician, you'll, he will play you any song. He'll work it out uh, right here. Yeah. Um, but I just play my own stuff. What, what really got me into it was I was a hairdresser. Yes. And I used to have people come in from bands mm-hmm. and they would, you know, get their hair spiked up and all that stuff, punked up and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they'd say, come and see us, you know, and just playing at the local clubs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I would go in there and I'd watch them and I'd say to myself, I could do that. So um, eventually, you know, uh, um, I picked up a bass guitar and started playing bass. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I had this one guy that I used to do his hair, and he said, oh, I'll teach you to play. And he said, I'll come round to your house. So he said, do this on the bass. And he played mm-hmm. some little thing, and I did it. He goes, there, you can play the bass. That's it, you're done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just went on from there, and my whole attitude yeah. after that was, if you can get anything out of any instrument, you you know, you could be in a band. So um, uh, when I joined, started playing with other people, Mm-hmm. I didn't think of what they wanted to do. I just thought about, oh, I've got this idea for a song. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started writing original stuff, you know, and and over time, I guess I got quite good at it. Nice. What did you think of other bands uh, from Liverpool at the time, like Echo and the Bunnymen and OMP? Uh, horrible. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously... Um, you know, they were in the, in their own genre. Echo and the mm-hmm. Bunny Men were on the darker end of things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like Bring On the Empty Horses and stuff, great song. Mm-hmm. Um, OMD were having hits, and they were they were more in our vein. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had their own individuality, and, of course, they were from Liverpool, so we were, we were proud of them that they were bringing Liverpool back to life, you know, as far as music is concerned. Um, there were lots of other local bands that didn't make it um, mm-hmm. that we liked, but we didn't count ourselves as a part of the Liverpool scene or the Liverpool clique. Mm-hmm. We wanted to get out. You know, a lot of bands in Liverpool wanted to conquer Liverpool and be known as local heroes, mm-hmm. whereas our idea was the world. What's yeah. the use of being a rock star if you can't conquer the world? Right. You know, so um, mm-hmm. so we worked in a completely different way. Uh, and, and strangely enough, you know, you choose your own pathway and it'll work. We didn't, you know, lots of local bands became local heroes. We we left and became, you know, in quotes, world famous um, because we were so different. Absolutely. And the funny that you were mentioning that you don't think of yourself as a musician technically, but you guys still won a Grammy. So that's pretty amazing. It, it is, but you know, I didn't <laughs> sing on the Grammy song, so does that mean mm-hmm. I'm not a singer? You know, we didn't get a Grammy for anything I sang on, so oh. you know. Mm-hmm. But that's well, just my little joke, <laughs> yeah, Grammy yeah. joke. Right. Um, getting a Grammy was. Uh, we we didn't really know what a Grammy was, you know. Mm-hmm. If we'd have known, I think we would have gone to California or wherever the Grammys were yeah. and accepted it because we could have said thank you to America for accepting us as a band, yeah. making us successful. But uh, we never got to do that. And I don't think on my next Grammy, I'll pick it up and say thank you. That's what I was going to say. The story continues, right? You're still yeah. writing your novel. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't want one as a band. I want one for myself. I'm going to be greedy. There you so go. I want a Grammy just for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, cheers to that. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thank you, Mike, so much for your time, and looking okay. forward to um, your upcoming show at the Mountain Winery on September 1st. Okay. I'll, I'll see you there if you get there. All right. Have a good one. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.